So today we head off to Ullus again and we get the taxi to drop us off at Genchlik Park, a very popular park in the summer with its own lunar park full of amusements, an outdoor theatre and an artificial lake. There is also the municipality theatre nearby as well as the sports stadium and the main railway station. As I have mentioned before, the weather has been mostly cloudy for the duration of our stay, so you're seeing anchor at its worst rather than at its best. But we can't do much about that, so today we'll be taking a look at some of the museums in the city. The Grand Assembly Building, the Turkish Parliament. This important building is where all the main decisions were taken regarding Turkey's international and domestic activities and it played an important role in the Turkish political history from 1924 to 1960. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's principles and reforms would have come to life here. The building is beautifully maintained and the main assembly hall with its beautifully ornate ceiling is quite spectacular. There are a number of rooms all accessed via a central corridor with displays of government equipment, furniture and personal items some of which Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's are included. If you're going to be visiting a lot of museums in Ankara then you can buy the museum card at several locations in the city. It's called Musekart. Just a little further up the road is the original Grand Assembly building. It is older but similar in that it has a central corridor with rooms on either side. One of those rooms is of course the main assembly hall with their old-fashioned desks and heating stoves. Although this building was altered several times, it was just not large enough to accommodate the needs of the growing assembly of the Turkish Republic, which is why the Turkish Grand National Assembly next door was built and opened in 1924. Melike Hatun Mosque is a new mosque in Ankara. It was recently opened to service on the 27th of September 2017 and it has a capacity for 7,000 people. Our next stop is the Ethnography Museum. This houses a collection of objects and displays relating to the cultures of the Turkic tribes. The building was designed by Arif Hikmet Koyunoğlu between 1925 and 1928. Before the Anat Kabir was built and during the construction period, the museum housed the sarcophagus of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk from 1938 to 1953. The museum details the funeral event and there is a statue of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk on his horse outside the main entrance. This is a small museum with displays illustrating the clothing that people would have worn along with artefacts and furniture depicting Anatolian life. The elevated position of the museum lends itself to some spectacular views of the Ankara city landscape. The large building alongside the museum is the Paintings and Sculpture Museum. 
Our next museum is Ataturk's Museum Mansion in Chankaya, within the grounds of what was once the old palace. But first we leave our taxi at Atakule, a 125 metre or 410 foot high communications and observation tower, which is one of Ankara's most well-known landmarks. Built between 1987 and 1989 by architect Raga Bulic, the top section was designed as an open terrace and revolving restaurant. The tower is currently closed to visitors for renovation, but the large shopping centre adjacent to the tower, the atrium, was the first modern shopping centre in Ankara. The layout and open plan of this shopping centre with its carefully placed seating and terrace balconies with spectacular views of the city below is very pleasing to the eye and probably one of the nicest of all of the malls in Ankara. There are some great views today of the snow-capped hills in the background. As we walk towards the palace entrance for the Ataturk Museum mansion, we can see the British Embassy in Shehit Air Samjadise. The only reason I include this here is because I used to work there and it brings back some fond memories. The Embassy is located in its own extensive grounds with an administration building, ambassador's residence, a school, swimming pool and its very own pub. This area of Chankaya is home to several diplomatic missions and embassies. In the old days, there was terrible smog in Ankara, so all the diplomatic staff insisted on being housed in Chankaya and Ghazi Osman Pasha because it was much higher up and it escaped most of the pollution. So we finally arrive at Ataturk's museum mansion. You are advised to book your visit in advance or at the very least check the opening times because this is not open all the time to the general public. The mansion is within a government centre, the old palace, so security is tight and no movie cameras are allowed. Filming inside the building is strictly prohibited. We walk down Shehit Air Sand Street to see the Pembe Kushk or Pink Palace, which is an Ottoman era house in the Chankaya district of Ankara and which is the city's oldest villa. It was the home of Turkish President Ismet Inunu from 1925 to 1973. Unfortunately it was closed for renovation so we'll just have to come back another time. All the museums that we visit in this Ankara series of four videos only show a short clip of what is inside. To show much more would just spoil the experience for you. All of these museums are worthy of a visit when you are in Ankara. We take another taxi and head out to Ataturk or Manchitli to visit Ataturk's house. On the way we pass by the presidential complex where we were not allowed to film so instead you have a Wikipedia photo of it here. The area around the Ataturk or Manchifli used to be forested, hence the name, but there doesn't appear to be much of a forest left here anymore. The house is set within a garden and trees. This is an exact copy of the house that Ataturk was brought up in when he was in Thessaloniki, in Greece. The rooms that you see inside give a good indication as to the way houses were furnished in those days. 
As we walk through the forest farm, we can see that there are now restaurants, nurseries and businesses where once there were just trees. A sign of the times. I am told this place still gets popular in the summer. So, as if we haven't seen enough for one day, we decide to head out to the Armada Shopping Centre, which is one of the premier shopping centres in Ankara. There are two sections, Armada 1 and Armada 2, which are interlinked by a bridge with some beautiful night views of the street life below. There are over 125 stores in this arcade, which was beautifully decked out in New Year decorations. The surrounding streets are lively, bright and vibrant, with shoppers and people heading for the restaurants and cafes. Well, that was a long day. We hope you enjoyed watching. Tomorrow we'll head for the castle and the surrounding area around Ullus. Please give us the thumbs up and why not subscribe?